five year student. Welcome to this third exercise lesson. Today I would like to talk about uh, uh, reduction oxidation reactions, which we used to call in short form redox. Uh, redox are incredibly important uh, reactions for uh, our societies uh, because uh, are widely used in many, many fields, many industrial and civil fields or technological fields. Uh, you have to consider that combustion of hydrocarbons and uh, their derivatives are all redox reactions. The formation of important substances uh, of uh, uh, common interest uh, from their basic elements as the production of ammonia uh, from uh, hydrogen and nitrogen uh, is are uh, redox reactions. The uh, all the the, the uh, processes uh, that are between the functionality of the batteries are redox reactions. The um, the composition of some substances to obtain important compound as the water electrolysis to obtain uh, uh, hydrogen uh, are redox and more and more. Um, the the, the, the uh, processes that highlight the um, corrosion of metals are also uh, redox reactions. So uh, we have to consider that for a long, long time, uh, this kind of uh, reactions uh, were practical, practically uh, unknown uh, because they were explained by the, the concepts of the alchemy. But um, we, have to, we have to wait the, the incredible works of uh, uh, Lavoisier, Chile, Faraday, and other incredible uh, scientists to, uh, to obtain uh, some explanation uh, regarding the real nature of this kind of reaction. In particular, Lavoisier uh, defined for the first time in the right way uh, the oxidation as a process in which an element binds with oxygen giving rise to a compound called oxide. On the contrary, uh, uh, it was defined as a, a reduction, uh, a reaction in which an element is divided, is free from oxide. And this was the historical definition uh, for these two uh, incredibly uh, important processes. Uh, here you can see some examples of these two processes. Uh, the first two are, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> now it's better. Uh, the first two are, uh, by the definition uh, we, we just gave, uh, two oxidations, in particular, uh, these are two oxidations studied by Lavoisier. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we have an element that binds with oxygen to give rise to an oxide. And uh, uh, the second two reactions are defined as reduction processes because we can, we can see the oxygen uh, between the, uh, the products of the reaction. Uh, we have freed the, the two uh, substances from the oxygen. And this, uh, and this, was, uh, this was considered reduction processes. I, am, I have some problem to, to, go, to go on with the slide. Uh, but with the, the, the improvement 
of the consciousness regarding these uh, processes, we, uh, we have understood, understood that these processes could be described as, uh, uh, in the case of the oxidation of, uh, as a reaction in which an element lose electrons, simply lose electrons. And on the contrary, the reduction occurs when an atom gains electrons, take electrons from another one. So this change of point of view uh, that are in accord with the, the previous definition given uh, by Lavoisier and Schiele, of course, but these are a more precise definitions due uh, uh, to the, the, the improvement in the awareness of the, of the processes. You have to consider that uh, after the discovering of the electrons by Thomson, uh, all uh, was simpler in the understanding of the mechanism behind the, the this, these reactions. Uh, this new, this new uh, point of view, oxidation, a losing of electrons, and reduction, a gain of electrons, uh, bring with, with them uh, new, a new definition of the world processes, because we understood that uh, if there's an element that is losing electrons, there must be another element to gain these, uh, uh, these electrons. So the processes are linked together. Uh, they are not separated processes, but uh, they are the, this, the reduction and the oxidations are the two phases of the same coin. They happen together and uh, they happen contemporary and uh, complementary. And um, uh, this brings to redefine the definition of, the, of a redox reaction of a reduction, oxidation reactions as a, a reaction in which uh, a transferring of electrons between elements contained in a compound participating in a, a reaction occurs, a transferring of electrons. Um, here I, I wrote that the element that's, that is taken electrons from another one assume the status of oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent. And in the same time, uh, the element that is giving off their one, two, three electrons to another one, to another atom, uh, assume the, 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 the status of a reducing agent. Uh, so, as I said, the two processes are inextricably linked together, inextricably. Namely, therefore, there are complementary. Um, oops. Okay. Here, you can read what I, I just said. Redox reactions can be defined as an electronic transferring reaction. But regarding uh, that definition, we have to clarify something. Um, we have to clarify that sometimes, or not ever, this, trans this transferring of electrons is complete. Uh, not so rare that the transferring of electron is only partial. Why? Mm, consider that. When uh, uh, a covalent compound is formed during a reaction, um, 
the, the transferring of the electrons between the atoms are not complete because no ions are formed. No ions are formed. Uh, as you know, in the covalent compound, the, the, pair, the pairs of electron, or the pair single way, or the pairs of electrons are shared between the atoms. So no ions are formed. And you can, you can, we can understand uh, this, this thing, uh, taking a look to this, uh, to this reaction. Here we have a reaction in which an ionic compound is formed. This is the case in which the transferring of electrons are complete, giving rise to ions. In particular, here we have the reaction of formation of the sodium chloride in its solid form, starting from the sodium in its solid form, reacting with the molecule of chlorine in its gaseous form. What happens during this reaction? To, uh, to explain, to show in a better way what happens in this, uh, in this reaction, it's useful to uh, divide the reaction uh, in two, uh, two half reactions. One representing the oxidation and the other one representing the reduction. But we have to consider that this process, this is a virtual uh, dividing because the reaction take place, these two reactions take place on contemporary, okay? Here we have that the sodium, in particular, two atoms of sodium, because uh, the, of course the, the reaction is balanced, two atoms of sodium become uh, two cations, two monovalent cations of sodium, uh, releasing two electrons. This means that uh, Every atom of sodium is releasing one electron. And this is, of course, an oxidation by the, the definition uh, we gave previously. Because we have an element that is losing electrons, that is giving to someone else electrons. And in this case, you have to put electrons on the right side of the equation between the products, because in this case, electrons are really products of the, of the reaction. Um, why sodium is given one electron every atom? Because you have to remember that sodium is an alkali metal placed in the first column of the periodic table. And this means that uh, this is an element with only one electron situated in the uh, external S orbital. And so only one electron uh, can give. And um, uh, you know that the character of metals is uh, to give electrons to other, atom, uh, to other atoms, to other elements. And this is what is doing here sodium is giving electron, is doing the metal. Uh, in the secondary reaction, we have the molecule of chlorine that is gaining this, the two electrons released by the sodium, the two atoms of sodium. And this gives rise to two monovalent anions of chlorine. The, uh, these two monovalent uh, atoms, um, anions <coughs> of chlorine with the two monovalent cation of sodium gives rise to the ionic compound that we call, that we used to call sodium chloride, the common salt. Uh, in this case, every atom of chlorine is taking 
one, only one electron because the chlorine is an allergen as and is it is placed in the penultimate column of the periodic table. Uh, the position of the elements that are missing only one electron to fill completely, to completely fill uh, their external orbitals of type sp. Um, consider that this, this, uh, uh, this thing happens because the atoms, all the atoms, has the tendency to become isoelectronic to the nearest uh, noble gas in the table. So, sodium lose one electron per atom to become isoelectronic to the neon that is placed uh, um, in the previous energy level, in the previous line of the table. On the contrary, chlorine that uh, has almost full orbitals gain one electron gains one electron to become isoelectronic to ergon that is the nearest uh, noble mm -hmm. gas in the same line in the same uh, energy period of the table and uh, in this case we have a, a real transferring of electrons between the two atoms. Real, because this transferring give rise to ions. And so the chlorine become the, the owner, is the atom of the, of the electrons, of course, uh, is the atom that possess the electron actually. And sodium, of course, is the atom that lose completely lose the electron. Here we have a different case because we are considering the formation of the hydrochloric acid. Uh, so we have, we also have um, chlorine by, but in this case is, it is reacting with hydrogen and not sodium. And uh, in this case, a covalent, a covalent compound is forming. Okay? This is a molecule. The sodium chloride, it is not a molecule. It's a, an ionic compound because the, the very high difference in electronegativity between sodium and chlorine. Here, the difference in electronegativity between these two atoms is high, but not so high to uh, obtain an ionic compound. So a molecule is formed. A molecule in which we have uh, a, covalent, a covalent bond that is polarized. Polarized means that the, the, pairs, the pair of electron uh, shared by uh, between these two atoms are closest to the chlorine that is the element with the higher uh, electronegativity. Uh, in this case, what we can say that there isn't a real transferring of electrons. Mm, we can use uh, uh, maybe the, 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 the term of a shift uh, a movement of, or displacement of uh, the, the electronic charge, but not a real complete transferring. And this is uh, a, a thing we have to consider, we have to know. Okay, but how we can consider this transferring, total or partial, in the same way without using the different methods, we can, uh, we can consider this movement of electrons between uh, elements inside the compounds uh, that are reacting uh, using the oxidation numbers. 
or oxidation state of the element that you already know uh, because the uh, this, uh, the oxidation numbers uh, were explained by Professor Panzini during the, his lessons. And so I would like, uh, in any case, briefly remind you something regarding the oxidation numbers because it's, uh, it is a very important thing uh, to uh, recognize uh, a redox reaction and to, uh, to think the, to balance a redox reaction using the oxidation numbers of the elements. Um, so, oxidation numbers, as you know, Uh, oxidation numbers, as you know, it's uh, are virtual charges. Uh, why I'm saying virtual charges? In the case we are considering a ionic compound, uh, as pre as previously seen, um, the oxidation numbers we we set for the elements are really uh, equals. To the, to the charge of the ions that is uh, that made up uh, the unit of formula that made up the ionic compound. But uh, in the case uh, of the hydrochloric acid, for example, or any other covalent compound, the, the oxidation numbers uh, are not equal to the real charge of the atom. They serve to, uh, to consider in, uh, uh, to which the electrons are closer, to which element the uh, electrons are closer. And so they are uh, uh, virtual charges, in effect. Um, so, here I have reported some indications, some rules regarding uh, the assignment of the uh, oxidation numbers to the elements contained in a compound. And uh, of course you can find uh, uh, more detailed, more detailed uh, indications on your book on, uh, uh, in the the lesson of Professor Pansini. Um, for the first, the oxidation number of an element of an elemental atom or for an atom isolated, that is isolated or in its fundamental state uh, is equal to zero because there isn't polarized charge. An atom isolated is a neutral, is a neutral space. The oxidation number of a monatomic, monoatomic ion is equal to the charge of the ion. Oxidation number for no metals are usually assigned as follows. Hydrogen equals to plus one when bonded with no metals and minus one when bonded with metals because Hydrogen is, has higher electronegativity uh, to the respect of metals. Oxygen has number of oxidation equal, equals to minus two. Ever, except in the case of uh, oxygen is uh, uh, beans with the fluorine because fluorine uh, has uh, higher electronegativity. Fluorine is the, um, uh, the, the element with the higher electronegativity. Uh, oxygen is the second with the higher electronegativity. And except in the case uh, we, we are considering oxygen inside the per peroxide. In the peroxide, um, as the hydrogen peroxide, uh, 
the, the number of oxidation of oxygen is equal to minus one, because uh, inside this compound we have a, uh, a bond between uh, the two uh, oxygen atoms. And in, for this reason, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this bond, this covalent bond, it, it is not polarized because uh, the two atoms are equally strong, strong in attracting the electrons. Okay? And so the, the, the bond is not polarized. And this is the fact, and this is why uh, oxygen in this uh, compound takes minus one and not minus two. Allergens. Allergens uh, have ever uh, oxidation number equal to minus one, except when they bond together or they bond with oxygen, uh, except in fluorine. Uh, in that case, they could uh, could take several several uh, oxidation numbers values. Rules for the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms of a molecule or of uh, a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of the molecule zero or the overall charge of the polyatomic ion. So, this condition allows us to, uh, to set all the oxidation numbers. Also for elements uh, not directly uh, known to us. Here we have uh, some uh, 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 some exa examples in the setting of uh, the oxidation numbers in the element. Here we have the molecule of water. As we said, oxygen takes minus two and hydrogen takes plus one. The sum of this uh, uh, the the sum of these uh, oxidation numbers considered with the coefficient appearing in the formula has to be equal to z zero. Two multiplying plus one equals to plus two minus two equals equals to zero. Because the overall charge of the molecule is zero. It is not uh, a polyatomic ion. As in this case, the hydronium ion. In this case, the, the sum of the oxidation numbers considered uh, to the respect of the coefficients appearing in the formula uh, has to be equal to the overall charge of the ion. And so, in this case we have, this is a monovalent cation. And so, oxygen is equal to minus two. Hydrogen is equal to plus one. Hydrogen has only one electron, of course. It's the simplest atom. And in this case, we have three multiplying plus one, plus three, minus two equals to plus one, the charge of the ion. Here we have the ammonia molecule. In ammonia molecule, hydrogen is equals to plus one because hydrogen has the, the lowest electronegativity uh, to the respect of all the known metals. And so nitrogen, we know, uh, having a, uh, electro, a, an higher electronegativity. Uh, and for this reason, uh, its oxidation numbers is equal to minus three in this case. It's negative. Three multiplying plus one, uh, minus three equals to zero. 
Here we have uh, an isolated atom, zero. Here we have an, uh, a monoatomic ion, in this case uh, a cation, um, precisely uh, a ferrous ion. In this case, the oxidation number is exactly equal to the charge of the ion. Here I have put um, the oxidation number, but usually uh, it's not requested to, to write the oxidation number on a, on, on a monatomic ion. Uh, I only have to see the charge to know what is uh, its oxidation number or oxidation state. Here we have the previously considered reaction of formation of the sodium chloride. Now we can, we can uh, set the oxidation number for every element contained in the reaction. Here we have sodium isolated zero. Here we have chlorine in its uh, molecular, molecular gaseous form and the oxidation number is zero because the covalent bond between the two atoms of chlorine, it, it is not polarized. So we cannot recognize um, any, any displacement of charge. The charge of the, of the bond is exactly in the middle between the two atoms. And here we have the uh, minus one for chlorine in the sodium chloride, of course, uh, due to its higher electronegativity. So we are, and here we have plus one for sodium. Um, as you, uh, as you see, uh, we are considering exactly in the same way covalent compound and ionic compound uh, is almost, uh, uh, we, we are considering all the compounds as ionic, but it is not true. Okay, you have to know that is, it is not true. Uh, is a, it is a fictitious charge in this case. These numbers show me that the charge is closest to the nitrogen, only closest, but not totally possessed by nitrogen. So we can uh, redefine uh, the, the, the definition of the redox reaction, uh, of the redox reaction um, as Reactions in which the oxidation numbers of two or more elements change. Okay, in particular, if I recognize that the oxidation number of an element increase uh, from uh, the reactants to the products, I understand that uh, that element is uh, oxide, oxided, undergoes an oxidation because its oxidation number is increased, are increased. The increasing of the oxidation number means that uh, 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 an higher number of electrons are given to another atoms. And you know, the properties of every element depends on the electrons. If you take away electrons from an atom, you are taking away uh, all of its properties, physical and chemical. Think about iron and rust. The rust is the result of the oxidation of iron. We, are, we have extracted electrons from iron, uh, obtaining the rust that is a very different material from the, from the uh, original iron, uh, a, a really poor material without mechanical, uh, 
without good the good mechanical proper uh, properties uh, initially possessed by ions. Uh, if we uh, recognize that the oxidation number of an element decreases, we we can we can say that this uh, element is undergoing a reduction. Reduction equals to decrease in oxidation number. So, setting the, the oxidation number of all the elements of a, a reaction allows us to recognize if this reaction is a redox and to recognize, uh, to find out what is the element that is uh, reduced in the, in, the, in the reaction. So, the element that is reduced is the oxiding agent. And what is the element that is oxided in the reaction? And this element is the reduce, the reducing agent or reducting agent. Okay. Um, to balance the redox reactions, uh, different uh, methods uh, was uh, was defined or were defined. Um, here I suggest you, I propose to you, the methods based on the uh, based on the use of the incomplete half reactions. The half reactions uh, is the partial reactions we have seen uh, uh, previously. And, um, okay, I will explain you. Here, I, I, uh, I did a, a, a little report of what you have to do to balance a redox reaction. Well, first, set all of the oxidation numbers of the elements. Then, Define which element is increasing its own oxidation number, and uh, and that and the other another element, uh, it here we have uh, an error. It is decreasing his oxidation number. Then write the two incomplete half equations, referring only to the elements that change their oxidation numbers, virtually extracting those elements from the compounds in which they are contained. So what I'm trying to say is that um, the, the, the use of a method based on the ALF reactions is a very common method. But we can consider the ALF reactions as complete or incomplete. Complete uh, are the cases in, in which uh, the half reactions, in the half reaction, I put all the compound containing the element that is changing um, is uh, oxidation number. The incomplete half reaction is a, a virtual reaction in which I extract, I virtually extract only the, the element that is changing uh, its oxidation number and writing uh, for, for only for, for it the half reaction. Uh, why I'm proposing, I'm suggesting you this, uh, the incomplete half reactions. Because uh, in my opinion, uh, dual uh, less um, uh, formal uh, exposition, uh, it is uh, uh, a powerful, a more powerful uh, method because you can, you, can, you can balance, you can solve any kind of uh, redox you have to, to balance, any kind. Um, with the complete half reactions, 
you can you can balance uh, without problems all the reactions in which in in its ionic form in in many cases when you don't have um, uh, ions in your reaction you have to put in the out reactions charges that uh, are not involved are not really involved in the in the reaction and i don't like this uh, i don't like this i prefer to use only to write the out reactions only regarded to the regards of the elements that are changing the oxidation number without report all the compound that is containing that element to continue after we have uh, right in the right way the in the correct way uh, the two half reactions the, oxi the oxidation and the reduction of reactions we have to balance the electron transfer by multiplying both sides of each reaction by the number of electrons that appear in the other reaction as a sort of a cross multiplication. It's more difficult to say than to do. I guarantee. This technique will lead to obtain the same number of electrons for both of reaction. And this is the first balancing we have to do. We have to balance for first the electron transferring. Why we have to, to, um, to balance the electrons? Because to respect the uh, conservation of the, uh, of the charge law, but we also say the conservation of the mass law, because if you remember, electrons are entities with mass, and so, in, if in a, in a reaction the mass is conserved, the electrons have to be conserved too. Okay? Then, introduce the previously defined stoichiometric coefficients into the entire reaction, or the world reaction, as you prefer. Uh, complete the balancing to the end by inspection. Okay? In the modality we, we have seen in the previous uh, lesson, the last point, if the reaction is in its ionic form, a lot of reaction happens in water, and a lot of uh, compounds are able to produce ions when you dissolve it or dissolve them in water. And so, it's not so rare to, to consider reactions in ionic form. In, the, in this case, after we have uh, balanced the, the, the electron transferring between the alpha reactions, we have to balance the overall charge of the uh, left side and the right side of the reaction. So we have to introduce positive charge as H plus cations or protons or uh, hydroxide hydro, um, hydroxide ion that is negative that has negative charge where necessary to balance the overall charge if the media is respectively acidic or basic um, probably when you will see this uh, lesson uh, you don't have studied uh, the acid-base reactions yet but I will teach you to use this charge uh, in the proper way mechanically uh, in this moment after you uh, after Professor Fancini uh, will explain you as base reactions you will understand all in a better better
Finally, introduce the right number of water molecules to the opposite side of the reaction, where the protons or the hydroxide um, ions are found. Seems complicated, but it isn't. Finally, we have here uh, an example of what we have to do. Here we have uh, this reaction involving uh, this uh, dichromate, potassium dichromate that is reacting with sulfur and water, giving rise to uh, sulfur dioxide and uh, potassium uh, uh, hydroxide and this oxide of chromium. So, the first thing I have to do is to set all the oxidation numbers of the elements. Okay? And uh, as, you, as you can see here, so I can start from the salt and I can write minus two to oxygen because as, you, as I said, oxygen takes ever minus two, excepting uh, two uh, rare case. The case in which oxygen is reacting with fluorine is makes uh, bond with fluorine, or in the case in which oxygen is contained in a, per, in a peroxide. And this is not the case. Here, oxygen is equal to minus two. After, I can put plus one to potassium, that is an alkali metal, cousin of the sodium. He is placed in the first column of the periodic table as sodium. And so I can, I can uh, calculate the oxidation number of chromium inside this compound. In this way, 7 multiplying minus 2 equals to minus 14 uh, plus 2 uh, plus 2. I obtain minus 12. And so, uh, minus 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So here I have to put plus 6 to obtain. Plus 6 multiplying 2 equals to minus 12. And so the overall charge of the compound is equal to 0. Here, I put zero on the isolated atom of sulfur. Here I have written the oxidation numbers in water because they are uh, always the same, minus two plus one uh, for the two elements. Here we have oxygen equals to minus two. Two multiplying minus two equals to minus four. So we need plus four for sulfur to obtain the, the, uh, an addition equals to zero. Here it's very simple because all the oxidation number of these, of these elements are uh, known, I won't, minus two plus one plus one. And here we have oxygen equals to minus two. He's having uh, is uh, bonding with the metal, so it's clear that is minus two. Three multiplying minus two minus six. So here we have plus three to obtain two. Multiplying plus three equals to plus six. Ma minus six equals to zero, because here we have an oxide and not an iron. So having do this, Having did this, um, we can we can recognize what is the element that uh, to which the, the 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 oxidation number is increasing and to which the oxidation number is decreasing. In this case, I can see that chromium is first equals to plus six. Uh, Please remember that the oxidation number is always referred to a single atom. So don't look to the number 
uh, appearing in the formula. After you can consider consider it, uh, consider it, but when you write the oxidation number, you have to refer ever to the uh, to the to a single atom. Here we have a chromium that is changing is decreasing its oxidation number, passing from plus six to plus three. How can I write this condition using an um, incomplete half reaction? Here, of reduction, of course, because uh, the oxidation number decreases. So I, I have virtually extracted the chromium from its compound. And I have uh, right a reaction only for it. Chromium plus six uh, plus three electrons equals to chromium plus three contained in this compound. Um, I would like to suggest you to, to write the oxidation numbers exactly in the center of the symbol of the element, exactly in the center. So you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot confuse the oxidation number with the, the, the charge of an ion, okay? So in the center and uh, usually we used to, to, to write oxidation number in this way, plus three. Uh, and the, the, here we haven't ions, but uh, we used to, to write the charge of the ions exactly on the contrary, three plus. And this is uh, to, to, to distinguish the two situations. Here, I have written the uh, uh, incomplete alpha reactions of uh, oxidation of the sulfur, because I can uh, notice that sulfur changes oxidation number from the reactants to the products from zero to plus four, and I, I have written uh, uh, this, uh, this oxidation uh, reaction, alpha reaction, in which the electrons are product. In the first, that is a, a reduction, the electrons are reactants, okay? Sulfur with oxidation number equals to zero Give, gives Sulfur with oxidation number plus four contained in that ox uh, oxide plus four electrons. Now, we have to balance the electron transferring between the two of reactions. And how we can do this? Using a sort of cross product, a cross multiplication. Uh, so, I have multiplied by four all the reaction uh, of um, reduction and by three all the reaction of oxidation obtaining in the in this case the same numbers of electrons I have balanced the electrons, the electrons transferring. Chromium uh, takes 12 electrons uh, because sulfur gives 12 electrons. Doing this, the, uh, having the, this, we can take all the coefficients uh, obtained in this balancing and put them in the whole reaction. As you can see here. Okay. Um, 
starting from this one. I have to put four in front of uh, the formula containing the chromium plus six. I have to uh, consider four atoms of chromium of, uh, with the uh, oxidation number equals to plus six. So I uh, see the formula and uh, I recognize that chromium is, is still present. It's just present with the uh, two uh, coefficients equals to two. There are two atoms in the formula. Uh, I have to consider this because uh, in total I have to, uh, to, uh, to consider four atoms of chromium. So uh, I, can, uh, I can put in front of the formula, not four, I have to put in front of the formula, not four, but four divided by two, two, to obtain the four atoms you have to consider that the, this stoichiometric coefficient is multiplying all the elements contained in the formula. So two multiplying two the f equals to the four atoms uh, imposed by the balancing I did. For uh, the chromium with the uh, oxidation number equals to plus three, I have to do the same thing because uh, in, the, in the formula of the oxide, there are, there, there are uh, already two atoms to consider. And so uh, I cannot put directly four in front of this formula. Mm, I do a mistake. So I have to do four divided by two, two. As you can see here, okay, four atoms of chromium, four atoms of chromium. Then we, we can pass to the sulfur, to balance the sulfur. I have to use this three, uh, in front of uh, the symbol of the sulfur, and in this case I have no, no problem, there are no coefficients uh, to consider. And um, and three sulfur of uh, with oxidation number equals to plus four, and you can put three in front of the uh, sulfur dioxide, obtaining three equals to three sulfur atoms. Good. Uh, with this uh, with this uh, uh, step with this passage. We have balanced, balanced the electronic transferring. Now we can continue in balancing the reaction, balancing the mass using the, the balancing of by inspection that you already know. Uh, so we are in this, uh, in this uh, situation. Balancing by inspection means that I have to consider for first the metals in balancing and after the non-metals accepting the hydrogen and oxygen because hydrogen has to be considered as the penultimate non-metals to balance and oxygen the last. So here uh, I can see potassium, the hydroxide potassium um, still um, hasn't uh, a defined uh, coefficient here. Consider that when you haven't set a, a coefficient in front of the formula, uh, the, co the coefficient is not equal to one. It's undefined. Okay? And here, uh, I, can, um, I can see that uh, this coefficient imposed to consider four atoms of potassium. 
and so I have to put four uh, in front of uh, the uh, potassium hydroxide. Uh, what remains? Remains only the water. So I have to, here I have to, uh, I have set all the, I have um, defined all the stoichiometric coefficients. So uh, I, I can't do anything at all. I only have to count the hydrogens. And here we have four atoms of hydrogen. So I can put two in front of, of the water molecule, obtaining the wall uh, reaction balanced. OK. Now we can do some exercises together, OK? Okay, let's, let's try to balance this, this equation, similar to the previous one. Okay, this is an equation in its uh, complete forms. I can derive from this equation, this chemical equation, uh, the ionic, the ionic form, but uh, now it's, uh, it's not... Uh, necessary to do to do this. Uh, if I would like to use the complete half reactions, I have to pass from this uh, entire uh, form to the net ionic form. But I would like to uh, uh, avoid to do this thing, to propose you this thing, because uh, you have to already have studied uh, what uh, what uh, what is an electrolyte and uh, the way he, he used to um, uh, to produce ions in water and um, this is not the right moment in, in my opinion so we will continue to use the the method based on the incomplete half reactions okay here we have a potassium permanganate, and I can write minus two on the oxygen as an oxidation number, and directly plus one for potassium, as we, we uh, said uh, previously. And I can calculate the oxidation number of the manganese. Four multiplying minus two, minus eight plus one, here I have to put plus seven to obtain uh, an addition of these numbers equals to zero. Uh, I would like to, to write one time this operation for you. I, I did. Number of oxidation of potassium plus number of oxidation or oxidation number it's the same uh, of manganese plus number of oxidation of oxygen multiplied by four equals two plus one plus seven minus two multiplying equals zero. Okay? Okay, now I can erase. Okay, let's
let's continue to in the setting of the oxidation number. Here, hydrogen is plus one without doubt. And it, this means that sulfur has take minus two. Two multiplying plus one equals to two minus two, zero. Okay. Here we have this sulfuric uh, acid and oxygen is minus two, hydrogen is plus one, and sulfur in this case is equal to four multiplying minus two mi equals minus, minus eight plus two. This means that sulfur has take has take um, plus six. Here minus two plus one plus six minus two. Here uh, apparently I could have some problem in setting the oxidation numbers because. I can ask to to me uh, what uh, what is the number of the sulfur and what is the number of the manganese, but it is not a real problem because in this case uh, when you are not uh, so uh, certain uh, what you have to do, take a look to the group in which the element is contained here. We have a group SO4, SO4. The same group we have here and here. What does it mean? It means that nothing is changed in this group of atoms. Nothing. In, in, uh, um. So, if nothing is changed, the number of, the, of oxidation of the sulfur is the same, is plus six, also in this case. This permit me, permits me to, uh, to define the oxidation number of the manganese. It is equal to plus two. Here, zero, here you have minus two plus one, but it's always the same. Okay. Uh, having did this, I can, I can recognize that manganese, he, uh, manganese um, is reduced during this reaction. Because uh, its oxidation number uh, pass from plus seven to plus two. So this element undergoes a reduction. I can write manganese plus seven plus. Uh, five electrons equals two manganese plus two. The electrons are reactants in the reduction and the manganese plus two is the product of this reaction. Then, oh, I can see that sulfur change is uh, its oxidation number from minus two to zero. Sulfur minus two become sulfur zero, losing two electrons. Why I have not considered this sulfur? Because this sulfur is equal between the left side and the right side 
of the equation. And this means that this sulfur uh, hasn't really followed the reaction. He remained equals. So I have not to consider it in terms of the uh, redox reactions. After, maybe I'll show you the ionic, the net ionic form so you can, you, you can better understand what I'm saying now. Uh, okay, now we have to balance these two half reactions. We will use the cross product, the cross multiplication. So, I can multiply all the alpha reactions by two. Okay. And this one by five. Now I'm doing all the passages, but uh, then I will directly write what I have to, to, to write without this passage, this step. Okay. This is equal to two manganese plus seven. Ten electrons giving rise to two manganese plus two. For the sulfur, we have five sulfur minus two that are oxidized to five sulfur. Zero plus ten electrons. Good. We have balanced the electron transfer. Now we can we can uh, go back to the world reaction and uh, introducing to introduce the stoichiometric coefficients we have found. So I have to put two in front of the formula containing the manganese plus seven, two. Then two in front of the, the manganese plus two. Then five in front of the uh, the hydrogen sulfur. Uh, hydrogen sulfide and um, five here in front I can write in a better way so five plus zero plus what okay now we can proceed to balance the mass by the method by inspection by inspection so I have to check if uh, there, there is uh, a metal to balance, and uh, I can say no, no. So I can consider this sulfur. Uh, here we have one plus two, uh, three plus five, eight, eight atoms of sulfur. So I have to put eight here. And for the last, we have to balance the molecules of water. Here I can, I can count uh, five uh, multiplying to 10 plus 
8 multiplying uh, 2, 16. So 10 plus, six, uh, plus 16, uh, 26 atoms of uh, hydrogen. So, uh, 26, I will speak the right calculation, I think so. Plus, so uh, ten, uh, twenty, ten, and twenty seven. So I can, I have to write thirteen molecules of water. If I, I have did the Correct calculation. The, oxy the, the oxygen must be work. So we can check. Here we have eight atoms of oxygen and plus um, thirty-two atoms of oxygen. So we have a total of 40, 40 atoms of oxygen. Here we have uh, 13 plus something doesn't work. Sorry, I did a mistake. Italia la eh, Renato perché che minuto è al 16.37 c'è l'inizio della cosa così ve lo dico un'ora e venti un'ora e venti oh l'ho fatta 35.000 volte sta cosa eh, lo so, ma queste sono complesse queste cose cioè a, a quel punto è, è difficile riuscire a fare una cosa del genere mamma mia che noia allora vediamo dove ho sbagliato perché che cosa ho sbagliato? 5, 5. Ok, fino a qua ci siamo. Quindi metto 5 là, 5 qua e ok. Uh, poi mi rimaneva lo zolfo da valutare ed era 1 più 2, 3 più 5, 8. Quindi sono costretto a mettere un 8 qua davanti. A quel punto diventa 8 per 2, 16 più 10, 26, 26, e, e però poi viene 13 qua, ma è impossibile. Quindi da 7 a 2 5 elettroni, da meno 2 a 0 2 elettroni. Tanto 2 e 2. Ok, il potassio è già bilanciato. Ok. E, e l'idrogeno? Il potassio è già bilanciato. 5 più 2 è 1 3.
the sword. Porca grossa, 32. E qua non ci stanno 32 ossigeni. 4 per 2 è 8. Più 13. E... Cioè, quando ci arriva? 21 e 25. Come dovrebbe essere giusto. Quindi, dove diavolo è stato il bippo? Ah, che coglione. Mm. Vabbè, tanto sta tagliato tutto qui, no? Oh mio Dio, guarda. Cioè, no, mi, 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 mi meraviglio di me stesso. Il problema lo sai qual è? Che il punto di vista di questa, delle lavagne non è il foglio. Per cui è facile che per cui io non sto vicino, perdo di vista le cose. Cioè lo zolfo sta già qua, lo, non l'ho contato, l'ho contato due volte. Mannaggia. Mannaggia. Allora, praticamente io riprendo da dopo aver... finito il bilanciamento qui quindi questo l'ho messo questo non c'è infatti questo uh, sì questo sì questo così quindi ho messo 2 5 2 2 e 5 ok riprendo da qui in pratica perché lo zolfo carola erano 8 sì ma dovevo fare 8 meno 5 3 cioè, se non voglio non l'avrei fatta una cazzata del genere però vabbè ok Ok, now we have balanced the, uh, the electronic transferring between the half reactions and we have uh, defined the stoichiometric uh, coefficients of these elements. Now we can proceed to uh, balance by inspection the reaction. Uh, I have to check if there, there, there is a some metals to, to balance and uh, I recognize that here we have two atoms of potassium and here we have two atoms of potassium too. So now I can consider this coefficient equals to one. After uh, the last no metals uh, before the hydrogen is sulfur. Here we have one plus two, three, plus five, eight atoms of sulfur. So here I have to, uh, to set uh, eight atoms of sulfur in total. So I have to do eight minus five that are still present, are, uh, are already present in the, in, the, in the reaction. So here I can i have to write three. Perfect. For the last, I have to, uh, to balance the hydrogen. Here we have six atoms of hydrogen. And I can put three. We have six plus ten atoms of hydrogen, 6 plus 10, so uh, 16 atoms of hydrogen in, uh, in total. And so here I have to put 8 to obtain 16 atoms of hydrogen in total. Uh, if I haven't did mistakes. The oxygen uh, has to be working. So we can check. Here we have two plus four, 
eight atoms of oxygen plus 12 atoms of oxygen. So we have in total eight plus 12, 20 atoms of oxygen. Here we have four plus eight, 12 plus eight, 20. In this way, the reaction is balanced. Okay. Great. Okay. Exercise. nitric acid giving copper nitrate plus uh, nitrogen monoxide plus water. So, let's go to set the oxidation numbers of these elements. Here we have zero. Here we have minus two plus one plus one. And so the nitrogen has to be equal to plus five. Here, I have to uh, notice that this group is equal to this group. It's equal to this group. And so this means that inside this group, that is an ion, is the uh, nitrate ions, uh, uh, for truth. Um, the, the nitrogen has to take plus five as previously written. This means that here we have three multiplying minus two of the oxygen minus six plus five minus equals to min minus one that is multiplying by two and we obtain for all for the whole group here minus two as resultant a resultant um, number of oxidation. So the copper here has to take plus two. Here minus two plus two minus two plus one. Okay. It's clear that copper are oxide in, uh, in this reaction and uh, because um, we pass from zero to a copper plus two losing two electrons at the same time the nitrogen is reduced because uh, the its oxidation numbers changing from plus five to plus two, taking three electrons. Doing cross product we obtain three coppers equals to three coppers plus two uh, plus six electrons and 
Blunder reaction two and it was pi with three electrons giving two nitrogen with the plus two oxidation state. So now I have to to put these uh, stoichiometric coefficients in the wall of reaction. But this time I have to be um, I have to be careful in, uh, in doing this because it's necessary to notice, uh, notice something. Here we, we have the nitric acid and we understood that nitrogen is uh, uh, reduced in this reaction, but not only uh, all the nitrogen is reduced because a part remains exactly the same, giving rise to this salt, the copper nitrate. And I have to consider this thing. So to consider this thing without uh, have to think something special or uh, something uh, difficult, I can, I can write for you um, uh, an additional passage that is, is it's not uh, necessary for real, but I hope uh, will, um, will help me to show you what I, I'm telling you. Here we have the copper zero plus what I did um, due to the fact I have noticed that not all the nitrogen uh, is the reduced I have scorporated divided the two in two parts the nitric acid considering a part the the first part the part that remains the same giving rise to the salt and the second part the part that following the the redox reaction uh, reaction give rise to this monoxide i can do this uh, um, uh, this thing because the, the the coefficient in front of the nitric acid it's it's still um, undefined so I can play as I want with the reaction until the reaction is hasn't um, defined the coefficient of course so here I will start to to introduce the coefficient the coefficients I, I found three in front of copper and three here in front of the salt of the copper then here I have to put two in front of the nitrogen and I decide to put here this two and I have to put two in front of the nitrogen that has uh, which has this oxidation state plus two okay now I can go back to uh, balance by inspection the part of the acid that doesn't follow the redox reaction and the part that give rise to the salt this part uh, gives rise to the this oxide and this part to be defined give rise to the salt here I can count two multiplying three a total of six atoms of nitrogen and so I can put 
six here. So this is the part of the initial quantity of the nitric acid that gives rise to the salt without change the uh, oxidation state of nitrogen. And this is the part that gives rise to the oxide following the, uh, the redox reaction. After I, I did the same, I can add together this, this two, uh, um, these two quantities that I have incorporated only to show you uh, the different ways followed by nitrogen in this reaction. So I can write three coppers plus two plus six, eight molecules of nitric acid equals to three unit of formula of this salt plus two molecules of monoxide plus I have only to define the quantity of water. Here we have eight atoms of hydrogen. So here I can write four molecules of water. Now I can check the oxygen, obtaining that uh, three multiplying eight is equal to uh, 24. And here I can count uh, six uh, multiplying three, 18 plus two, 20 plus four, 24 atoms of oxygen. And so, in this way, the reaction is, uh, is balanced. 